dive back in with me as I continue my tour of my scrap box. This piece of furniture was truly a dream come true for me. In this part two, we keep diving into the customized corners and clever configurations that keep my creativity flowing. Discover how every spool, sticker and paper scrap has its place and maybe find some inspiration to refine your own crafting haven. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So in part one, we covered the left side of my scrap box up until here. Today, let's start from this side here from the door and work our way to the middle. So this door panel is covered with black felt that came with the scrap box. The other option was to have a black magnetic surface or I think even a whiteboard surface. I am not 100% sure about that. I chose the felt because I wanted to be able to attach these clear pouches. So I think they're very practical. You can just take them off. It provides a lot of extra storage and you can always reconfigure this. So I'm not going to go through each of these pouches individually. Basically, I have things in here that I don't know where to put anywhere else. <laughs> Labels I would put into journals, butterflies. This is mostly dragonflies and butterflies. Ephemera that I have made. Here and here, here's some glass bottles, special vintage finds for future journals, handmade ephemera, handmade ephemera, feathers, wooden pieces like letters and numbers, some handmade clay tiles. There's a compartment here on the bottom where I keep my large stencils. My medium and smaller sized ones are on the other side of the room. Again, I will refer you to my organization playlist linked below this video. Moving to the next part of the door with my large drawer starting from the top. In this one, I have my beloved fibers. These are all from Taperlogy. I will link their store below this video as well. These are super fun and I really, really treasure them. I'm happy that I can have these in a separate drawer so that I can easily see what I have. And as I'm showing you this, I'm thinking maybe it would make more sense to switch these two containers because this one is overflowing to put all my lace in my big drawer and to cut these down a little bit because they're a little bit too wide to go in here. But since I don't have as many of these as I do lace, that would probably make more sense. I will definitely consider that. Second drawer from the top. These are all my beloved designer fabrics. So these are by Tim Holtz, Seth Apter, Marsha Dursey, Ebond, etc. These are all very precious to me as well. I use them quite frequently and I will link my German online source for these below for you as well. Next is my drawer of washi tapes. This is a collection I have curated over many years. This was very, very full. I have started using up quite a few of these and I'm not planning on getting any more until this is substantially more empty. I used to use these a lot. I don't really anymore. I think because I really enjoy dimension in my collages especially. So I tend to go more for fabric than for washi. But I still love these. I've put so much love into curating these. <laughs> they make me happy looking at them. This is my drawer of ribbons and other fibers. It is semi-organized. <laughs> it used to be more organized. This part here in front is a bit of a mess, but I have most of my ribbons wrapped around cards. I have a few spare ones in the back here. Some are on the original spools. Yeah, it's a bit of a mishmash, but I use these frequently. This is one of three wooden stamp drawers. I love these a lot. I have last decluttered these two years ago. I haven't got any more since. I'm very happy with my collection. I think some of my favorite ones are some that I got from Japan, which are ones like these fun ones. <laughs> or 
these cuties. This penguin. These cute little birds. Or this cute flower here, which is a very large stamp. These are all from a shop called Cute Things Made in Japan. They also have stationery and all kinds of things. I will link their site below for you also. So this is drawer number two. This has some of my larger stamps as well as a handmade stamp made with washers. These two border ones I got from a craft flea market years ago. They are the brand Aladine. I don't know this brand actually. I think it's a French brand. I have some alphabet stamps and some numbers. And I have a very special dragonfly one here from my dear friend Eman. So this one is made in Egypt and it's an Egyptian dragonfly. I love it so, so much. And this is my third stamp drawer with more numbers and alphabet stamps. In this beautiful vintage box, I have some more sentiment stamps like for birthday and thank you and things like that. These here are some small fairy stamps. My 12-digit roller stamp, which I use quite frequently. Love this one. And this beautiful wooden date stamp, which was in a box from Your Creative Studio, which is a subscription box. And in this blue box, we have some letters and numbers for embossing. These are really heavy duty. So you could use these, for example, on leather with a hammer. In this box back here, I have more vintage stamps that I have been gifted. These are numbers. Really, really great stamps. And then I have a collection back here. This is all the same company. These are tiny, but they are the cutest. I buy these locally. This is the logo and the name, Jeco, D-J-E-C-O. Not sure if these are easy to find or not. So for example, this is a tea set. They're just so cute and they stamp so well. This is a birthday set, which I only actually got. Oh, these are tumbling because of the distressed numbers. Love those. Then here's one with adorable hearts. And this, I think, was my very first one. <laughs> this is so cute. Look at these cute little creatures. Next, I have a few drawers with paper scraps. This one is handmade collage fodder. So this is a very fun one. This one is dedicated to neutral paper scraps. Love this one a lot as well. These are great for making backgrounds for collages. Most of these are actually vintage papers or book pages. This is a drawer where my special vintage papers get to hang out. So these are all originals. I hoard these more than I use them. <laughs> I have digitals on some of these. So you can check out my shop for digital versions of German vintage papers. I have two or three sets. There's also American ones here. I treasure this a lot. This drawer has more vintage papers. This is more like book pages, music sheets, sewing patterns, vintage magazines, maps, things like that. This is very special. This is a piano roll with some piano paper. 
This is awesome. I think sometimes you can find these in like estate sales. And then here's some tissue paper, which is not vintage. I got this at a party from a food truck years ago. It's really fun to use in collages. This is a real treasure box, treasure drawer. <laughs> It has mostly Tim Holtz things and all of these things from this box were gifted to me by Sweet Debbie from the US. She had all of this in her stash. Some of these things are no longer available. So these are items I tend to also hoard more than I use them. So we have some Tim Holtz paper dolls. We have some milk caps, trinket pins. Love these. Word bands word plaques vintage safety pins salvaged dolls hex fasteners christmas adornments more trinket pins mini paper clips various tokens and plaques charms in here swivel clasps we have a viewfinder reel word cards, library pockets, paper bags, various cards and envelopes. These are treasures. I can't get anything like this in Austria, obviously. These are also interesting kind of envelopes. Then we have these cards, not sure what they're for love these kind of envelopes this is my last one there's this window envelope there's these very long paper envelopes and these kind beautiful keys i believe these are also tim holtz found relatives cards they look like cabinet cards totally hoarding these <laughs> and there's a package of tag labels envelopes score cards and finally some tissue wrap this is called melange i have a very emotional unboxing video of when i received these treasures it was a huge box i will link that for you in case you want to see that video as well then i have two boxes of happy mail items they are both filled to the brim. They need to be put in journals. I have made one or two Happy Mail journals in the past. I really urgently need to make another one. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in watching. When I get mail or cards from you, these days I tend to put them in my planner if I can. But these are older items that I received before I was using my junk journal planners. I didn't really have a place to put them in. So they have been living in here temporarily. Then I have this drawer with mostly cellophane packaging for reusing and some other cute little bags that I can reuse, paper bags, things like that. Not very exciting. And then the last drawer on that side, I keep the large foam stamps from pm artist studio these are so much fun i'm so in love with these by the way this is bob the beetle <laughs> never knew something like this existed then i have some of my larger acrylic stamp blocks moving on to these narrow shelves starting from the top going all the way down The first one has metal and wood embellishments. These are, I think, pretty much all of them from Action, collected over the years. Some of these I have been gifted. Then there's some vintage brooches or necklace pieces that I found at flea markets. This one is gorgeous as well as this one so these need to find like the perfect journals this one i think i've been gifted as well as these kind of brooches so they need to find the perfect journal to be on 
Box number two, not very exciting. Three different compasses. Next one, also not very exciting. <laughs> Rulers and protractors. This one is a little more fun. Again, something I should use. These are all like fun little notepads. And these, I think, were all from your Creative Studio boxes. They are really fun. I just don't tend to grab these. I won't show you all of them now, just some of them. I mean, they're really cute. Some fun post-its. I wouldn't use this as a post-it, but it's a fun element for a collage. These look like toasts, but they're supposed to be vintage papers, but they're still cute. <laughs> I got these boxes for a few years, actually. I have a whole playlist on my channel with the unboxings and how I use some of the items. But as you can see, I just got too much stuff and I was overwhelmed, so I stopped the subscription. This is a bit of an odd one. It has like little odds and ends for traveler's notebooks. Yeah, not very exciting. This one as well. These are all traveler's notebook inserts. This is one with craft paper. This is a cool one. This one I like a lot. With a zipper here and a flap here. I'm currently not using my traveler's notebooks which is a shame because I love them. I love the size, especially the, the long one. I'm sure I'll get back to it at some point. I do have this one next to my desk. It's an original one. I love the combination with the red elastic. Then I added this on top, added these charms. Haha, <laughs> inside I have this writing board that goes into this tuck spot. I have again one of these that I just showed you. And here I have another tuck spot. And I have an insert here. Ah, I designed this myself. I remember this was the, one of the first things ever that I designed digitally. <laughs> and I put YouTube here because this is where I wrote what I need, the links I need to include in videos. This is how I always used to do it. Oh, it's full. And then I started using different notebooks for that, but I might go back to this because I just really love these traveler's notebooks. This drawer has some thin washi tapes that I tend to use for, not for decorating, but for random things like, like positioning a die or holding a small page down in my planner, like temporary uses. Then I have these cute ones with hearts and special washies. Then I have my thank you cards here for when I send physical products and also thank you stickers. And by the way, these drawers are dividable. So there's three places you can divide them. So you get these little acrylic plates and you can just slide them in here to divide them, which is actually really great. I'll just leave that one there. In this one, I have more Tim Holtz products. I have these sentiments. Are they called word chips? I'm not sure now actually what they're called. Love these, hoard these, as well as some other smaller ephemera packs. This one is where I keep my adorable label maker, which I was gifted by my dear friend, Honey. It's called Make ID. You connect it to your computer and there's an app on your phone, which you wanna write on the label. And then when you print, it comes out here and then you can cut it here. It's just the cutest thing ever. And these are all different tapes that you can use with this printer. Love it. In this drawer on one side, I have brads. 
So again, something I used to use a lot more. Oh, there's also a cute paper clip. These kind of brads. These. And on this side, I have <laughs> very, very old art pieces. These are thick. I used to make these. Unfortunately, I did not date them. Why? I don't know. If I would have to guess, I would say I made these around 2015, 2016, something like that. What's this one? I used to have a lot more of these. Oh, I love this one with the fox. Here you can maybe see better how thick they are. They are on really thick panels. I really enjoyed making these. And there's this one. I guess I don't really know what to do with them. I guess these would be fun on little journal covers. They're definitely too thick to go into a journal. Whole reinforcements and stickers, like alphabet stickers, numbers, random ones. Oh, I, I forgot I have these. I'm going to use these in my planner. I'll take them out now. Oh, these are really fun. These are huge stickers. These were also from your creative studio. Beautiful. And then I have some more thank you stickers. So this kind and some botanical washi stickers. Oh, and I have, <laughs> this was a design team project, I don't know how long ago. It's just a compilation of tags. Alice in Wonderland themed. Obviously I have a video on that somewhere. More Traveler's Notebook style notebooks, as well as these two. Don't remember where I bought these from. It was local. Super cute. They're not quite the Traveler's Notebook size. They have craft paper inside. Such adorable covers. And this is the last one of these boxes. This has a whole bunch of paper bags. And since this drawer is all the way on the bottom, I totally forgot that I had this. So I never think about using these. These are super handy. I should use them more often. Oh my goodness. And there's really, really cute ones here. Oh my goodness. These are adorable. I really need to use these. Wow. Had them forever. These are stunning. Don't ask me where I got these. I've had these such a long time. So I moved this em these envelopes up now so that they're more in my sight and I will hopefully start using these. So next, let's move on to these big drawers here. Again, starting from the top. So this top drawer holds some pouches, which are great for traveling. This one is fun. Sorry for the glare. Be bold or italic, never regular. <laughs> but by far my favorite one, most treasured one, is this one. I ordered this from the artist Roxanne Evans Stout. You might know her. I adore her work so much. And I adore this beautiful dragon pipe. Dragon pie. <laughs> dragonfly pouch yeah and then we have this one i think this is from the us and underneath i have some tissue papers i use these sometimes for wrapping physical products don't have a whole lot some of these i actually brought back from the us from vacation because tissue paper is actually not as easy to get here in austria as you might think and when you do it's actually quite expensive this next drawer is for card making so it's a mixture of stamps with sentiments like for birthdays and such card stock that i would use to make cards 
envelopes and those kind of things. I used to make cards for colleagues a lot, especially for Christmas when I still worked at the school, which was my last job before I started my own creative business. These are mostly just remnants from that time. I don't really make a lot of cards anymore. This drawer has random papers in it. There's cardstock as well. There's all of these absolutely stunning thin ones. These are all from Taperlogy. Vintage notebook papers, other papers from other kinds of notebooks. Oh, there's even some tags. Bit of watercolor paper, all kinds of stuff that I don't use enough. Then I have two drawers of 12 by 12 cardstock. I have decimated this a lot over the years. I had a lot more, but again, I've curated these over the years. I don't tend to use these a lot anymore, but sometimes it's handy to have some. This box is a bit of a mess. <laughs> this is where I go to find sentiment stickers. Things like these. Also some rub-ons. These are fairly new. More rub-ons here. These again are Taperlogy. Then I have some of my logo stickers that I had printed with Canva. Oh, forgot about these. Transparent things. I shouldn't keep these in here, but I don't know where else they would make sense. I have more ephemera in this box, which I of course forget about because it's in here. A box in a drawer is not a good place. More sentiment stickers. Vintage cigar box that is falling apart with more sentiments. Oh, I have this here. I don't think there's anything in here. Oh, oh my goodness, there are. Oh yeah, I use these things for card making. I should probably put this in my card making box because otherwise I won't find them. And I think this holder, which is actually quite nice, is also from Cute Things from Japan, where the wooden stamps are from. And some of these stickers are from there as well. Second to last drawer, this one has smaller designer card stock as well as Project Life cards. I got these years ago at a craft flea market and I couldn't believe that someone had these because this is not something you could buy here in Austria. Don't hardly ever use them. Don't ask me why. These are some really fun Papers, again, your creative studio. And just some smaller paper pads. Some of these are from the US. These definitely are. And all of these are, I believe from, no, this one not, but these here are all from Action. This one, I believe I found at my Goodwill and it has beautiful papers, neutral tones, super versatile, totally in love with these. And the final drawer has cardstock scraps. Also curated. I have gotten rid of a lot of these from papers that I know I would never choose. So I love every single piece that's in here. So now we're in the middle section. Let's start with this shelf right here. This here is my oldest ephemera book that I have made. I have a video tutorial on how I made this one. I don't really use it anymore. I obviously still have ephemera inside that I forget about.
I'm not sure how many years ago I made this, but it's been a while. More recently, I think last year, I made this updated version, a very modern version. Love this one a lot. I love the fabric. Added some paint to the fabric. Added a bell to the closure. That alone makes me so happy. <laughs> made the closure out of the same fabric, as you can see. I have a tutorial on how I made this, which I will also link for you below. In here, I have some fun papers that I also made in a video. Is it the same video? I don't remember. I, if it's two separate videos, I will link two separate videos. So all of the ephemera here is a lot more modern. There's some stamps here with some of my handmade stamps as well. These ones here. Basically, this is collage fodder. And some fabric scraps in here as well. Love, love, love this one a lot. Also great for traveling. Then I have this vintage book that I made into an ephemera folder using my cinch. I have sold some of these in my shop as well. And by the way, I have more coming. I'm in the process of collecting more of these beautiful vintage book covers. Once I have a bunch, I will make the custom envelopes for each journal and then I can bind them. So thank you so much to all of you who have bought these in the past, who have written me emails that you would like to buy one and are currently patiently waiting for more to <laughs> arrive in my shop. These book covers are not so easy to find. Then I have these two little notebooks which I have covered myself. This was a vintage stamp album. And I'm using it to store smaller ephemera. Again, this is something I tend to forget about. But I really love this book. This one was also a vintage stamp album that I covered. And this is where I collect some lines from vintage books that I can use in collages that I also forget about. They're actually even sorted by theme, kind of. These are very fun to use in collages. And finally, I have this metal box here which holds some dry leaves and flowers in this next part i have some empty tins most of these are vintage this one is not and i keep my bobbins here for my sewing machine i should probably find a better use for this prime real estate <laughs> space right here doesn't really make sense to have something in here that i don't use at all i'll have to think about that see it's good giving a tour like this because you realize what actually doesn't make sense because you can't explain it <laughs> and then this part is very self-explanatory i love this a lot this holds so many markers pens colored pencils everything i don't know where else i would store all of these this is a unit that you had to purchase separately from the scrap box, but it is custom made to fit in here. And obviously you can configure your scrap box any way you want. Then I have three drawers here. This first one has all kinds of clips, paper clips, rings, things like that. The second one has watercolors and a candle. <laughs> that actually goes with my wax making things but there was no more space so this is where i used to keep my wax seal making things but my watercolors kind of took over this one is a bit of a mess as you can see this is like my tech drawer mostly external hard drives as backups for all of my videos and digitals Moving to this area of the scrap box, not super exciting really. Some odds and ends here, a vintage cigarette box in which I have some vintage papers. And I have this jewelry box, I love this a lot. So this opens up 
and in here i have all kinds of metal pieces bulb clips vintage safety pins paper clips brads that kind of stuff and then it has a drawer here which just has some more random stuff like smaller brads various smaller bits i have this beautiful box that i was gifted and inside i have more little embellishments and things then i have two acrylic boxes stacked on top of each other this one has vintage tickets this one has a vintage measuring tape and labels paper flowers that i made quite a while ago cute embellishments <laughs> This second one is almost empty. It has a few butterflies in here. And the bottom drawer is empty. Then I have this random basket which holds my beloved clickable alphabet stamps. This is the packaging. It's from Rick Collections. They do have these on Amazon as well from a different brand. And I have some packaging tape and I also keep some packaging twine on top here and next to that I have this gorgeous wooden box where I keep some sprays which are not Tim Holtz I have a few Isink sprays here by Seth Apter I have some Dilutions ink sprays and I have some Dino Wakely and finally, welcome to the mess under my desk. <laughs> I have a mixture of other kinds of fabrics, some jeans pieces, more fabrics, my cinch of my napkins that I used to have in the acrylic drawers, but I didn't use them enough to take up that much space in my drawers. Then I have some other tools here like paper cutter, scoreboard, stamping platform. A canvas paper is there. My jelly plates and jelly plate mark making tools are there as well. So this fold down table houses my sewing machine, which I usually have covered up if I'm not using it with this beautiful, I think Hungarian vintage tablecloth. And I love it there because my craft desk is right across from it. So I just have to swivel around in my chair and I have access to my sewing machine. And I appreciate that so much because before I had this craft room, when I was still in the other apartment, I moved here about, yeah, in September, it will be two years ago. I only had my dining room table to work on. And whenever I wanted to sew something, I had to schlep out my sewing machine from somewhere. So I was very reluctant to use it. And now having it here next to me is such a game changer and I love it so much. That's a wrap on part two of my scrap box exploration. I hope these insights help illuminate the potential of a well-organized space to enhance your crafting efficiency and enjoyment. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.